Hey gang, welcome back to where I talk about my knitting and my sewing. But today I have a stash story, a stash, I don't know, adventure, a place just out of frame here that is supposed to be like my sort of immediate stash, stash A, stash I was going to get through it this year and then it's just kept building because I thought, yeah, maybe. You know what? I've I have to show you. Now look, we don't live in an aesthetic house. Like we live in a practical house where one person works shift work and we both have hobbies that take up a lot of space. So, you know, it's a house. It's not a pretty house. It's just a house that is practical and it's a house where all our stuff is. Let me show you this specific out of control stash A and then I'll talk about it. Yeah, there's a lot there. Um, let me just, I'm going to go through it with you. Um, let's say the project that I plan to make with that yarn, if it's currently in progress yarn, it could be Christmas. Who knows? This is Miss M Vintage's sort of messy stash part A. Because I've got stuff squirreled around, you know. But it's, it's not that. It's like immediate stash. So. Here we go. First cab off the ranks. Half. Maybe even less than half a ball of Cleckheaton Country 8-ply. Because this is the overflow bag that all of this came in. All of this is being used currently for a Christmas project. Look, this is a drops pattern. It's a free drops pattern. And I'm sure some of you are already going, wah, 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 M, don't do it. It's free. But I'll say to you, free drops patterns had never led me astray until this one. I restarted it a zillion times. I'm talking five full full unpick even after the color work was started um, then I also just realized that I had made a mistake both of the fronts like they're not the same these mountains are like offset to this bit it's not supposed to be like that but I'm gonna knit the whole thing finish it and then if those sort of skinny mountains really bother me then I will go back and duplicate stitch. So that yarn is for this. It's fully allotted. I feel fine about it. For me, it should stay there. That's no sweat. Approved. It is deep olive. And it is also for not a Christmas knit, even though it is a Christmas color, it is a birthday knit former dad who's really unlikely to see this video and it is the Darabee vest by Sydney Squid School of Vintage Knitting there's a cable here there's a cable there it's very cabley it's very nice this yarn is also acceptable to live here because it's a current project happiness Approved. Now it gets a bit more complex. Yeah. Uh. <clears throat> huh. This is leftover Patagonia yarn from my D Lovely skirt knit in this brown. It's probably called Mahogany. And the Swing It jumper I made in this rust cinnamon colour. So I have a nice little set here. I was thinking about making a jumper from these two together that I could mix and match with the D Lovely skirt, but I don't have any plans for it. So this can actually go into deeper stash, not immediate stash. Hooray! Next, two balls of Harvest Gold. This, these were a gift 
uh, from my folks, I think maybe for last Christmas or last birthday, I was going to make a, it's a four ply, like a short sleeved summery something out of this. It's a really delicious color. I mean, mm. it was a back room special found by my folks in Bendigo. Um, I thought I had a plan and now I don't know if I have a plan. I need to think about this. Hmm. Okay. Probably doesn't need to stay in this active place. That's good. That almost hit that guitar. It's fine. Two leftover balls of rustic bellflower. But for some reason I want to say this like bellflower. But it's not, it's bellflower. Kind of purpley. I made a Monroe jumper by Squidney Nets out of this. And this must be left over or I bought extra. But I don't have a plan for it. So you know what? This is deep stash. I can move it out of this pile. Move it away. This, I bought it when I was physically in Bendigo after... My folks and I had a road trip back from Mount Gambia. I've got three balls of it. I want to make a Maureen lace jumper from Squiddy Knits. Are you seeing a theme? Anyway, I did the swatch on the recommended needles and I didn't, I didn't like how airy it was. It was too airy for lace. I know, haha. Ha. But let me see if I can find it. Talk amongst yourselves. It's, I mean, I do, I like the lace, I like the little shape, but the stockinette in, in between, it's too open for me. I, I want that to be more dense. So I need to size down the needle and do a little bit more work, but I figured I could probably start the ribbing, you know, cast on the ribbing because my waist size isn't going to change. Um, yeah, so that's that's what that will be when Christmas madness is over and I have some time. But that one, this is a fully form plan, fully formed plan, full form, a plan with form that's full. So that can stay. Well, this is the same deep olive color, but in four ply to what I'm using for dad <laughs> in eight ply. We could match. Um, I planned to use whatever was left over of that copper color to do some kind of maybe like home front or sort of basic two color 1940s jumper out of these two. That's that's that. So that's kind of a deep again. This is a deep cut. So it probably I don't have a plan for it and I need to know however much is left over from the curry color. This can go into deeper stash. This is really good. A good way to cut through your stash is to just decide that it's not that stash anymore and it goes somewhere else. No longer a problem. Hooray. Or it's it's like a future use problem that's not right now. So I don't need to think about it. I don't need to hold onto it in the current space. You can just Move it along for future M. Next. Yeah, we were in Luxembourg and we were just sort of wandering around. There's not a lot to do there if you've been there before. And there was this little tiny um, sort of like boutique-y style yarn store. And we went in and this color just spoke to me. It is a lace weight, 100% finest mulberry silk. It is made in Germany. And the color is Zitron. That's too French. But it does also say Atelier Zitron. Oh, you are leading me astray. I've had this since 2019 and I do really want to make something with it. So I'm going to keep it in my current and active pile of yarn so I can keep it at the forefront of my brain. Because I would love to have a shawl that reminds me of that big trip we did pre pandemic pre being made redundant from that job just you know good good happy times of naivety before the absolute 
waking hellscape of 2020. I have four balls of Bendigo Eggplant Rustic in the colour Mustard. Mm. It's such a rich, beautiful something. I was thinking about maybe a lacy cardi, a bit more open work. Good God help me, maybe even some bubbles, a bit of texture. That's what that was, but I do still really like that idea actually when I have this yarn out. Hmm. Again, it's not an immediate plan. I don't have a pattern picked out into the deeper stash. See you soon. Bow! This is, I've got three balls of this worth just slightly less than three of Rustic Ingrid Tweed. I think I bought all of this from a D stash, but from different people's D stash. But they're all the same dial up because it was a limited run. This was going to be a big, nice, open shawl. Rectangular was the plan for this. I still would really love to do that, actually. Knit a slab of knitting, call it a shawl. Drape it around you artfully. For a bit of shush, here's the partial ball. That's got 56 grams in it. Thank you, me. Look, I've kept little notes. <laughs> I'll think about it. Goes over there with the mustard. No, with the harvest glow. Very close to the guitar, I'll be careful. Ah, oh, beautiful. Like lawn bowls, that was. I bought this Tandy as part of a D stash from Ravelry. Four ply in the most beautiful green, like green pea grass color. Mm. I don't know what it's going to be. It's kind of like quite thick and quite bouncy for a four ply. I'll have to swatch it and see. I think it would probably do cables pretty well because it, it seems really bouncy and I've quite a bit of that I got like five or six skeins so I could do a full jumper it's very pretty mm. do you want to squish it see it's good to squish should we think about it yeah over near the guitar That was a dummy throw in lawn bowls, not very good. This is some, again, four ply. Um, Zalana. What is it? It's a like a blend of possum, maybe? 60% fine New Zealand merino, 30% brush tail possum, 10% mulberry silk. Oh, my delicate knitting sensibilities. I think I plan to make some sort of smaller neck cowl kind of thing with a natural color. Just sort of, you know, like small and tuck inable and just yunk and like tch -tch underneath the coat. Um, it's really beautiful. It came from a shop in Radelaide, bought for me again by my folks. I really would like to do something with this yarn soon. It's really, it's so nice. Let me open it for you. Mm. Mm. Machine washable brush tail possum blends. It's bonkers, right? Because in Australia, which is where I live, you can probably tell by this pretty intense accent. Um, you you can't you can't even like if you have possums in your attic or in your roof space, you can't set traps for them to kill them. They have to be released into the wild because they're a protected species. But in New Zealand, they were introduced there. I think they went across on some boats. And they, they kill, the possums kill all of the native New Zealand birds. I'm so sorry about that. As an Australian, I'm sorry that we have helped destroy some of your native wildlife. 
Anyway, so possums are like fair game in New Zealand. Uh, you'll find heaps more New Zealand yarn with possum content. You'll find more clothes with possum content because they're they're a pest. Just want to get rid of them. If you want to work with possum fiber or possum blends, get thee to New Zealand. And also it's a beautiful place. So just get there anyway. Yarn, you know, notwithstanding if that's not your jam. It should go into deep stash, but again, a bit like the Luxembourg yarn, I'd like to keep it at the front of my brain. So it goes into active. To start, these were gifts for last Christmas from some um, American friends of the family, John and Linda. This is Cascade 220 Superwash Color 1. Americans, man. Your yarn system is like, if it doesn't fit the snorkel, then you'll need a flute de loo um, and then just make sure that your tension hits seven fences. That's what it's like. Anyway, very nice green sort of flecked. There's a bit of yellow in there. No idea what to do with this. Lamb's Pride Superwash Sport. The Pride of the Lambs. Machine wash. Nice, sport weight. Cool. It's kind of, it's quite tealy, but I have four balls of that. It's very lovely. Yeah, that's, that's probably not super dissimilar. Leans a little bit more green. Seven of this beautiful, what are you? Silk and Merino, 70% Merino silk, 30, sorry. 70% Merino wool, 30% silk. It's very luscious and warm and like shiny and I have this colorway as well these are all gifts from last Christmas that I was going to work with this year this is the color bronze again look at that and like with this ah be still my beating autumn heart even these guys together beautiful this I think is too bright yeah, it's a bit too bright. But this guy, this from Obsession Yarns. Now, it's in the color Tauri. Does that mean anything to you? Like a very small amount of people, probably. It is part of the, this, this yarn was part of the Stargate SG-1 collection done by Obsession Yarns. Now, I kind of liked Stargate SG-1 and when I was younger, I had like quite a significant crush on Dr. Daniel Jackson because, of course, he was the best character in that. Anyway, then in 2005, maybe a little bit after that, after I graduated high school, my friend Steve bought me the box set DVD of all of the Stargate SG-1 episodes. And I was like, oh, no, 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 no. And I even used to like travel with them on my traveling DVD player because it was the mid noughties So it was, um, you know, like sort of Y2K tech style. And I just, I've always loved Stargate. It's just silly and fun and great and long. And there's a lot of, there's just like so much to watch. Anyway. In maybe 2020, it could have been during all of the big lockdowns. Dick was like, oh, we, need, we should probably watch something like Long will help us get us through. And I was like, Stargate SG-1? Do you mean Stargate SG-1? Do you want Stargate SG-1? Let's watch Stargate SG-1. Stargate, Stargate, Stargate. And it took us about two and a half years to watch all of it. You know, they're 42 minute episodes and I still loved it as much as I did when I first started watching it or even when it was on free air telly here. It was just top notch and it was filmed in Canada and we were sort of watching X-Files at the same time, which was filmed in Vancouver. And sometimes we'd be like, oh, they're in the X-Files forest or like the X-Files are in the Stargate quarry. Um, yeah, we had a great time. Of course, we did watch the the final two films as well that wrap up the Aura plotline and that wrap up the Gold plotline. Anyway, Tauri is the name of Earth. Um, but like, the other planets call Earth, like you're from the Tauri, you're a Tauri. That's what this color is. Anyway, we got there. Four ply, I've got three of it. It's so beautiful. <laughs> it's so lovely and I have no idea what to do with it. But it's, it's probably a sweater quantity. I could probably smash some sort of Stargate <laughs> inspired something something. So, all of these live together in one big old bag because I got them last year and I thought yeah I'll definitely knit all of these this year that sounds like a great idea and then you know I didn't and now we're here at this place oh what a warm hug mm. so happy so squishy. This is all the sort of immediate stuff that I thought I was going to knit with, but then has just sat in two bags looking at me all year. If you have 
Like, if you looked at these yarns and you were like, oh, that should be a... Oh, you could totally knit a... Out of that. Can you please let me know? Because I'm, I'm looking for guidance. These yarns are all in my stash on Ravelry. They are not for sale. I do want to find time to work on all of them. But yeah, if you're like, hmm, if you have this many meters of this, have you considered a blank? I would be so open to suggestions. Um, yeah, I just think I prefer to work on garments than accessories. So I have a few accessories planned. But um, I would really love your feedback. I would really love your help. I'm going to crowdsource ideas. <laughs> Is what's happening. Is there such is there a problem of being too creative? If there is, I have that. Yeah, I can do that. Mm, yeah, I'll do that. Oh, I take this on board. Definitely. Yeah, that sounds like a great idea. Uh huh. Mm, yeah. Go. Help. Please. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Well, that's that's it from me. Really, I've got to get this. I've got to get this done. Really, I've got a lot of knitting ahead of me. Best best knitting for you. I hope your stash is exactly the right size for you, whether you're trying to downsize it or you're trying to increase it or you're just buying pretty things because they make you happy. You know, a stash should, should be happy. It shouldn't feel stressed or overwhelming. So I hope your stash makes you smile. That's it from me. It's time to do a little bit more dancing to finish. And um, I'll catch you on the pearl side when you're up to it. <laughs> All right, and the noggin. 